Hear, hear. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I reject the comments from the member for Hawke and his imputations about the coalition also. I want to look at the sad story uh, of this government's record when it comes to failing to keep Australians safe yep. and failing dismally to manage uh, the economy. The two things yep. that actually matter most uh, to Australians right now uh, in a cost of living crisis and worried about their safety, their personal safety and their family needs. And for those opposite, they should look up the textbook, perhaps their uni textbooks, to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Number one is safety. Yep. Number two is a roof over your head and some, enough to eat, enough money to be able to provide those. The only thing that this government is actually strong on is weakness and incompetence when it comes to managing immigration and the economy, because we know that the first responsibility really is to keep citizens safe Correct. in our own country, Correct. to Australians, to the general public, to individuals and to our nation, national security. And under the former immigration minister, the Prime Minister's mate, who was unceremoniously booted to a portfolio with less stress uh, following the NZYQ High Court decision, the Albanese government released 178 detainees from detention. In that cohort were seven murderers, 37 sex offenders and 72 violent offenders. And the former immigration and the former Home Affairs Minister also booted to a less stressful portfolio, uh, one a bit less susceptible to blunders of national security significance, didn't have a plan B uh, when that NZYQ decision occurred by the High Court. They weren't ready to protect Australians from the criminals that they let out. The ministerial submissions released under the FOI laws and published by the Australian confirm that Labor had released detainees with no visa and therefore no safeguards such as reporting conditions or monitoring devices. That should be frightening, alarm bells yeah, to is. Australians. Frightening. And the former minister, Giles, then misled the parliament on 15 November 2023 when he said during question time, uh, quote, I can confirm that all of those individuals required to be released as a result of the decision of the High Court are on bridging visas with appropriate conditions, mm, but unquote. But so the Prime Minister proceeded with reshuffling his ministers and now we have the member for Watson who has four portfolios, uh, including Home Affairs and Immigration. I'm sure members opposite will have a great time on that particular point that I just made, uh, but think back to the last time when the member for Watson was actually the Immigration Minister in 2013, uh, when uh, 83 asylum seekers uh, 83 asylum seeker boats arrived in 80 disaster. days. Now, that's a pretty good strike rate if you're in sales, but it's not a very good strike rate if you are in immigration. So let's see what will happen uh, under his watch. Constant interjections, Deputy Speaker. Now, well, Australia is a generous nation with a big heart. And we punch above our weight when it comes to supporting refugees. We have a history of supporting refugees from other conflict zones, those 12,000 from Syria, as the Leader of the Opposition pointed out, those from Afghanistan. But this government has issued almost 3,000 visas to people from the occupied Palestinian territories, but we do not know how many people were subject to a clearance from our security agencies. In contrast, the UK granted 168 protection visas. Uh, the um, 153 temporary and residence visas have been approved by New Zealand and the US has accepted 17. So these countries have been more cautious uh, as to who they uh, let into their country uh, and the time that they take to do that, not so with this government. And it's not about racism, as the member for uh, Warringah mm. shamelessly said in this chamber. It's not about it's racism. About this is about averting a public inciting. safety yes. Disaster. Uh, should the proper processing steps not be followed by this government? So, face to face interviews by Australian officials in neighbouring countries like Jordan, uh, as we did in the Syrian crisis, uh, would be acceptable. Now, I haven't got a lot of time left to talk about the failure of this government on the economy, but Australians know they are hurting. They can't pay their bills. And I would ask them to think back look back to before the last election, think about the promises that were made to you that life would be easier, and ask yourself the question, mm. is it? No. 